Here we go, problem 4-69. Add, subtract, multiply, or divide the following rational expressions. Then simplify your expression if possible. So letter A, we've got two algebraic expressions here, or two algebraic fractions, and we're adding them. So we're going to need to do the first thing here. We're going to look to see what our factors are, see if anything reduces down to make it a little easier. And then we're going to have to look to see if we have common denominators so that we can add them. So, starting out here, I know I'm going to have an x minus 4 in my numerator. Now, my denominator, I'm going to need to factor that. For time's sake, so this doesn't take me all night long, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I've already factored them all. So you can just check to see if you factored them correctly as you're going through. This denominator should factor into 2x minus 1 and x plus 5. Then we have plus. x plus 3 does not factor, so our numerator right now is still x plus 3. And that is over x squared plus 5x. Now this expression does factor. Remember, the first step in factoring is looking for the greatest common factor. So x squared and 5x each contain the factor x, so we can factor it out. It does not disappear. It's still here. We have x times the quantity of x plus 5. Now, in order to add them, remember, fractions have to have common denominators. If we look at here, our numerator and denominator, there's nothing here that we can reduce in this fraction, and there's nothing we can reduce in this fraction. So we need to look at what factors does this denominator have that this does not have, and vice versa. So we have an x plus 5 here. This one has an x plus 5. But this one also has an x that this one does not have. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply this entire fraction by 1 in the form of x over x. So I'm multiplying that there. Now the same way here is if we look from this one back to this one. Now they each have an x in the denominator. They each have an x plus 5 in the denominator. But this one has a 2x minus 1 that this one does not have. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by the value of 1 once again. And remember, you multiply by 1, you don't change the value of something. You just change what it looks like. So if I multiply by 1 in the form of 2x minus 1 over 2x minus 1, now I can look to start simplifying this down and actually adding it together. When you do, and let's, let's just rewrite this here so we can kind of see what we've got. We have x times the quantity of x minus 4. And we're adding to that x plus 3 times the quantity of 2x minus 1. This is all right now my in my numerator. And my denominator is just x times 2x minus 1 times x plus 5. I cannot go through and start canceling things out. We put this x in here, right? We multiplied by x over x. We want to take it back out now. We want to distribute this x through to get rid of the grouping symbols here. And we want to multiply these two binomials to get rid of uh, the grouping symbols there. So we're looking at x squared, because x times x is x squared minus 4x plus, and now multiplying x plus 3 times 2x minus 1 here, so it's like foiling or using your generic rectangle to do it. We should end up with, when you do that, 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. That's for multiplying all this together. And the next step here, and 
you know, sometimes you can do this. If I'm not doing anything with the denominator right now, I'm just putting it still under the same denominator here. Let's just focus on simplifying the, the numerator, and then we can talk the rest of the denominator through. x squared minus 4x plus 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. If I'm looking to combine like terms, I've got a positive x squared and two more positive x squared, so I have a total of 3x squareds. I have a negative 4x and a positive 5x, which is going to give me just an x. And then I've got this constant term, which is negative 3, and I don't have any others here. So I've got minus 3 all over x times 2x minus 1 times x plus 5. Now this is asking for us to simplify the expression as much as possible. Uh, every teacher is different. Some teachers consider when your denominator to not be simplified when you leave it in a factored form, and some teachers feel that it's okay. By definition, if it's completely simplified, there are no more grouping symbols there. There's no multiplication that can be done. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and give you that other answer, but your teacher may be satisfied with this one. We have 3x squared plus x minus 3 over. Multiply this all together here. We should end up with 2x to the third plus 9x squared minus 5x. That right there would be your simplified expression where you've taken them and added them together. All right, let's move on here to letter B. We've got 4x squared minus 11x plus 6 over 2x squared minus x minus 6 minus the quantity of x plus 2 over 2x plus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this and factor it at the same time. So I'm going to factor to see if there's any way I can simpl uh, simplify this. So 4x squared minus 11x plus 6, we're going to end up factoring it into 4x minus 3 and x minus 2. If you're struggling with factoring, okay, you definitely want to get some help. If your teacher uh, knows that you want help, I'm sure that they'll find a way to help you. So make sure that you go see them if you truly want to get better at it. Our bottom, 2x squared minus x minus 6, should be 2x plus 3 and x minus 2. We're looking to subtract, so x plus 2 does not factor and neither does 2x plus 3. Now the neat thing about this one, because we factored it first to see what our factors were, we can see that right here we have x minus 2 divided by an x minus 2, which we know has a value of 1 over 1 or 1. So 1 times anything is going to equal itself, which actually makes this easier because if we take this and we turn it into 1, we're actually left with 4x minus 3 over 2x plus 3 when you multiply those. Now we actually have a common denominator. So we can take this and go to our next step here where we make it into one fraction. So we're going to say 4x minus 3 minus the quantity of x plus 2 all over 2x plus 3. Okay, remember, you're subtracting this entire quantity here, and that's a, this is a spot where a lot of people make mistakes because they forget to take this through. So what we should end up with here is 4x minus 3 minus x minus 2 
over 2x plus 3. And we're almost there with this one. So 4x minus x is going to give us 3x. Negative 3 minus 2 gives us minus 5. And that is over 2x plus 3. A little off center, but it's okay. And that's our answer for B. Now there's two more parts to this one. We've got 469C, which I must not have copied into here, so we'll just rewrite it out there. Letter C. The problem states the quantity of x plus 4 times the quantity of 2x minus 1 times the quantity of x minus 7 all over the quantity of x plus 8 times the quantity of 2x minus 1 times 3x minus 4 and we're dividing that fraction by 4x minus 3 times the quantity of x minus 7 all over x plus 8 times the quantity of 3x minus 4. 2020 hindsight, yeah, I probably wish that I would have already had that written out. But, oh well, here we go. So before I do anything here, I we all know that the first step in dividing fractions is turning it into multiplying by the reciprocal of the second one. But I'm going to just take a quick peek here. I already have this factored, so I can look here and see that I've got a value of 1 right here that I could take out. Okay, or take it 1 and multiply it times everything else there. So it's going to kind of disappear on us, which will be nice then. So when we rewrite this, we actually have x plus 4 times the quantity of x minus 7 over x plus 8 times the quantity of 3x minus 4. And now I'm going to take it and turn it into multiplication. So let's multiply that by the reciprocal of what we have over here. So our x plus 8 and 3x minus 4 are now in our numerator. Our denominator becomes 4x minus 3 and x minus 7. Now that it's all multiplication, we can treat it like it's one, one big fraction here, and we can look for factors that we have in the numerator and the denominator. For instance, here we know that x plus 8 and x plus 8 gives us a value of 1 over 1. We've got 3x minus 4 and 3x minus 4 give us a value of 1 over 1. Same thing with x minus 7 and x minus 7. So we have the quantity of x plus 4 times 1 times 1 times 1, which should be x plus 4. And we have 1 times 1 times 4x minus 3 times 1, which gives us 4x minus 3. And you don't need parentheses around that. That can actually be x plus 4 over 4x minus 3. Can't cancel anything else out, so we end up with that as our answer. That is part C, dividing the algebraic fractions. Last part of this one is letter D. I'm going to go ahead and move it down here. Let's try to beat the 20-minute mark. Go, Mr. Boyd. You can do it. You can do it. So letter D, we've got 2m squared plus 7m minus 15. Over m squared minus 16. Times m squared minus 6m plus 8. over 2m squared minus 7m plus 6.
<sighs> All right, here we go. So we're just multiplying here, so we need to know what factors we have. All kinds of fun factoring. I know you love it. So 2m squared plus 7m minus 15, when you factor, should give you 2m minus 3 times the quantity of m plus 5. This one is a difference of squares, so remember that's going to be an m plus 4 times an m minus 4. Top right side, we should factor this into m minus 4 and m minus 2. And our denominator should end up being 2m minus 3. and m minus 2. Next step, look for factors that will cancel out, or I know we don't like to say cancel out, but we'll give, that will give us a value of 1. So this is like one big fraction because it's multiplication. So we've got 2m minus 3 and 2m minus 3, which becomes 1 over 1. I've got m minus 2 and m minus 2, which become 1 over 1. I've got an m minus 4 and another m minus 4, which is like 1 over 1. So when we take this and we multiply, we have the quantity of m plus 4 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is m plus 4. That's our denominator. 1 times m plus 5 times 1 times 1 should give us m plus 5. So our value for d when we take uh, our fractions and we multiply them together should end up being m plus 5 over m plus 4. This is problem 4-69. Once again your answers 3x squared plus x minus 3 over 2x to the third plus 9x squared minus 5x for letter A. For B, let's move that out of the way. We have 3x minus 5 over 2x plus 3. For C, we get x plus 4 over 4x minus 3. And for letter D, you should get m plus 5 over m plus 4. This is Mr. Boyd signing off. Hope you have gotten a little something out of this. Bye-bye.